What's up, everybody? So excited to be with you on this week's episode of Let's Talk About It. Uh, Carla and Keevan are going to be talking a little bit about Thanksgiving. It's actually Thanksgiving Day. Um, So before you chow down or after you chow down, uh, take a few minutes to review um, what they had to say about Thanksgiving, um, what Thanksgiving should mean to a Christian, and what it should not mean to a Christian, and how we may have been miseducated about it in the past. So check it out. It's great. Hey there, welcome to this week's installment of Let's Talk About It. I am Carla Gerard here with Keevan Carly. We are so glad to be with you this week. Keevan, how are you feeling? I'm in pain. In your soul or in your body? A little both. Uh, Sorry. My, uh, I have some reoccurring neck pain. Would that be? No. Uh, recurring? Yeah, recurring neck pain. It has happened, this is the third time this year. And, um, it just comes, flares up, weird spasm, and sometimes it takes about a week or two um, to just relieve. So, actually, today it happened yesterday, or it started yesterday, and I feel about fifty percent better today. So that's quicker than normal. Okay. Well, no pressure for you to look at me while I'm talking. All right. Yes. Okay. That's fine. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm, right. I mean, it's a it's a difficult week of. Short work week, lots to do, lots going on in the family, a lot of decisions to make in, you know, Thanksgiving week of 2020. Yeah. So actually our plans for the week have just changed and just going to stay put and do our part of considering others and being safe. So I wanted to ask you if you had any, um, not Christmas, Thanksgiving traditions growing up or currently? Um... My family didn't have really any formal tradition, like, oh, we're doing this every year. Uh, Nothing said, but kind of an unsaid thing that our meal is pretty much, I won't say the same, but there are staple foods that have to be there. Mm -hmm. Like, I know pretty much I'm only getting red velvet cake on Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, That's one. But in particular, macaroni and cheese has to be there. Okay. If there's no macaroni and cheese, like Pastor Adrian's meme yesterday said, Macaroni and cheese is more important than turkey. It, really? It just is. Yes. I mean, we can. you can get rid of the turkey. We could have fried chicken. We could have anything, any other meat. But if macaroni and cheese is not there for Thanksgiving or Christmas, it's not. It's not Thanksgiving. Okay. Christmas. Well, I'm not surprised that your Thanksgiving tradition would be centered around food because you love food so much. That is who I am. <laughs> I love that about you. Um, so for us, uh, some Thanksgiving traditions were... Not as much about food. I do have a food one, but I'll say it after this. We always would shop on Black Friday, Mm -hmm. and we would make a big to-do about it. We'd go out. You know, used to, Black Friday was actually on the Friday after Thanksgiving, and stores didn't start opening or never closing, I should say. Mm. So as I thought about our Thanksgiving traditions this week, oh, my sister and I also would be given a big box of, a gift box full of Christmas decorations on Thanksgiving. Nice. That's nice. So a lot of my traditions clearly are centered around the consumerism that goes along with Thanksgiving. Yeah. Or a lot of American holidays. But the food one for me is, and don't let this, you know, whatever, bring your stomach up into your throat. Okay. Is that uh, I like the cranberry sauce out of the can. Like eat it out of the can. No, like it comes out of the can, comes out onto the plate. And then makes itself present in its little dance, you know, on the table yeah, the whole time. The jiggle. Jiggle. Nice. Yes. Yeah. I slice it and just like to eat it plain. That is very, very strange. Really? Yeah. Not I, a part of your, your table? No. My, my family does eat cranberry sauce. They put it on their dressing, though. I oh, don't I don't like dressing. that just eats it straight. Mm-mm. That, uh, I don't know. I feel like it's... Like it's satisfying to look at look look at because it looks like jello, mm-hmm. but then it's also kind of weird to look at. It's kind of like spam to me. Oh, like spam. <laughs> it, I mean, cranberry sauce might taste good. Spam tastes good, but it looks not so good. Yeah. yeah well, nice. maybe we're having a clash of cultures here because I don't think I don't know that macaroni and cheese was a staple for Thanksgiving for us. Yeah. I'm sorry. You're sorry for me? <laughs> <laughs> I do remember one Thanksgiving, it, I don't know why, but my family chose to go with friends. Like, it, not why, like, oh, I hated it, but it was just not a norm for us. Mm-hmm. And um, 
the family we went to, they had they didn't have macaroni and cheese, but they had mashed potatoes. And I remember as a kid looking like, mm-hmm. what's wrong with you guys? Okay. I, <laughs> well, well, potatoes but, were definitely yeah. a part of ours. <clears throat> one of the things I wanted to talk about today was I, when I was in South Africa, one of the trips we've taken since 07, I remember it was it was moving closer to Thanksgiving time. And I asked my South African friend, I'm like, what, what are y'all going to do for Thanksgiving? You know, what's going on? And and he so gently with me said, Carly, you do realize that Thanksgiving is strictly an American hmm. holiday. And I, I was I was taken back. I thought, wait a second, but you celebrate Christmas mm-hmm. and you celebrate Easter. And this is how indoctrinated I'm just thinking from having grown up, obviously in America, or for me, I grew up in America, growing up in church and yeah. Thanksgiving somehow being promoted as this, Christian holiday, yeah. but when really it's just a very strictly American holiday that isn't necessarily in its in its um, roots have, doesn't have anything to do with Christianity per se. Now, I do think the tradition of gathering with family and making a point to see family that maybe you haven't been able to see all year long is yeah. important. And um, it also brings pain for a lot of people. I know that for for certain. So maybe we should start today where thankfulness comes into play for the life of the Christian. That's a great start. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me share a couple things I was thinking through this morning when I was reading Scripture and then heard um, one of our leaders say this, that Thanksgiving or giving thanks is a way of life for the believer. So it's not just about Thanksgiving. It's not that we get up on Thanksgiving morning, check off the list all day long that we've shared what we're thankful for at the dinner table or we've shared with people and then we go to bed and we never are thankful again. We should be living a life of thankfulness. Right, right. And one of my favorite stories in the Bible is in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and it's about Jehoshaphat when the enemy is approaching him and the people, he goes to the Lord in prayer and in verse 12 of chapter 20, he says, For we are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. So as he seeks the Lord in the assembly of people, God gives him an answer, gives him a strategy on how to come against the enemy army, and he has them go before them and worship with these words, give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. And we see this particular phrase repeated throughout the Psalms Mm -hmm. as David writes the Psalms. Yeah. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever, which is always the perfect starting point for thankfulness. Because there are days that I don't have a whole lot to be thankful for, or it seems like I don't, but I can always come back to that. And then in the words of Paul and Philippians, and we like to quote this a lot when we're in seasons of anxiety and trouble, but rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice, verse 5. Let your reasonableness can never say that word right the first time. (laughs) Be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And throughout the New Testament, we'll have instruction to do something and be thankful. Give thanks in all things. Give thanks for all things. So the life of the believer truly should be the choice of being thankful on the daily. Yeah. Yeah, I know... um We were talking before about, I think you mentioned that there is, if you look up kind of how many times the word thanks Mm -hmm. or thanksgiving is throughout the Bible well, with the different variations of the word, thanks, thankfulness, thank, um, that it was over 71 times. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think, um, I know I looked up a few verses as well where we see literally and actually in 1 Thessalonians, I put it 1 Thessalonica, don't know why, Uh, that is where the church was. But uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus mm. for you. Where we see that, like this, that's literal wording saying God's will for his people, followers of Jesus, is that they will be thankful, that they will have yeah. hearts of gratitude. Uh, we also see in other uh, areas throughout the Bible from the beginning to the end, uh, and whatever you do, Colossians 3.17, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. 
Um, Psalm 7, 17, I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. I will sing the praises of the name of the Lord most high. And I think kind of what you were speaking to is, you know, that idea of having, if we cultivate a heart of thanksgiving, and sometimes it is a, it's a, a, a sacrifice, it's an offering. Uh, yeah. I, I don't want to try to find any positive right now. That's not the, the, it doesn't fit the mood or the emotion that I'm feeling, but God, I will offer this, this sacrifice of thanksgiving to you saying, I will set aside everything else to fix my eyes on you. Uh, and it does, it affects our mood. And, and mm-hmm. I remember studying uh, Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7, which you read for the first time. And I felt like God kind of helped me to see, you know, that that it is it's a mood affecting thing. It, it transforms our perspective where uh, the the promise of the peace that God gives to us, it's tied to our responsibility of not just lifting up the, the petition saying, God, this is what I want. This is what I'm asking for you. But it's tied to our lifting the petition with thanksgiving. You know, that, that promise, it, uh, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. There's a, it's a, a form, quadratic formula. There's hmm. prayer plus petition in parentheses, and then outside of parentheses plus thanksgiving. And then God will give you the peace which surpasses all understanding. And I just think that's that's amazing. And sometimes... We don't keep that in mind in our prayers, but if we actually take a step back and consider what does giving thanks do for me, Mm -hmm. we can realize, yes, our mood is affected, but it's it's not because our situation changes. It's because our eyes are being lifted to God and we're starting to remember and declare, God, you have been faithful in these ways. God, you, you sent Jesus to die to pay the penalty for my sins. Like that's that's the greatest thing that I'm like, whoa, I mean, I might be going through it. But remembering that gives me hope because I know that if you went to that, you went to those extremes, you went that far in your demonstration of love for me, then you're still sovereign enough. You rose Jesus from the dead. So you're sovereign enough to to help me in this situation, to get me through. I can remember that, you know, you parted the seas for Israel to get uh, away from Egypt. You Mm -hmm. you've done so much in the Old Testament and the New Testament and in my own life. And as I remember and reflect on those things, I can give you thanks and praise for the past, but also to encourage me through the present and into the future. That's great. One of the cartoons that my kids used to watch, my oldest boys used to watch when they were little, was a VeggieTales about Madame Blueberry. And she was this blueberry that, you know, was personified. But she would say a... um, Thankful heart is a happy heart. And then she'd sing this little song. I'm glad from, for what I have. It's an easy way to start. Mm. And we would always, uh, when the kids were little, we'd talk about, you know, Madame Blueberry and let's have a heart that's thankful. Because if God tells us that we're to be thankful, then we can be thankful in plenty and we can be thankful in want. It's not yeah. circumstance right. dependent. Right. So I love your math equation. Oh, Since thanks. I'm a math girl, I love that. I think one of the things that I'm trying to do this year with um, with my family is is trying to bring in the proper history of, mm. of Thanksgiving in our country. Yeah. Um, it is strictly American holiday, and what we're taught in schools or even what kids will do in preschool to have a feast and and dress up and just considering all these different traditions that surround this holiday, I... I really started to step back and say, you know, what is this? Is yeah. should we do this? Should we not? Is this okay? Is it's not? Is is it not? There's a lot of things that we may participate in in life that might be amoral. You know, is it good or bad? Well, neither. But but is this harmful? Yeah. I, I'm reminded in a lot of the things I'm doing right now when it comes to the work of social justice. Making sure that I educate my myself, making sure that I also educate my children the right way. Right. Because if we believe the Bible, then we believe that there are generational mindsets, generational actions, generational blessing, generational curse that we see in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. And um, and I want to educate my children the correct way about Thanksgiving. So one of the things I ordered this this season was this children's book it's called Squanto's Journey. It's the story of the first Thanksgiving. Now, had had have you heard of Squanto? I have not. Okay, I had not either. Only now, in the song. Oh, oh, what? Um, <laughs> aren't they saying Squanto? Squanto. Cowboy. 
I don't, I don't know. That's know. a good song, actually. <laughs> okay. To sing, but, uh, let's move on. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> okay. So when I ordered this book per request of a, of a, a girl that I um, have a relationship with on this journey of, of social justice and educating ourselves about our country, mm-hmm. I had not, I'm not saying that my teacher, that you didn't teach me well, maybe you did in school when it comes to Squanto, but I, I was unfamiliar with this situation. Yeah. Now, I've also listened to some historians this week talk about the first Thanksgiving. Now, in a nutshell, so I am encouraging you to go do your own research, your mm-hmm. own education, but in a nutshell, what the first Thanksgiving, quote unquote, I'm going to say it that way, yeah. what, what it really was what encompassed those events is not necessarily how it's celebrated now. Right. So there was a group of, they called themselves separatists. They were, they were um, in a congregation over in England. Mm-hmm. They left there for religious freedom, they said. So they sailed to Holland. Mm-hmm. They get to Holland and, and how um, the people, the, I guess you'd say the Dutch people, but mm-hmm. how they're working the land, how their commerce, how their industry works. These English people were not accustomed to it. It was too difficult, so they decided they're going to set, set sail again. There was two ships. One of them was the Mayflower. Right. The other one, I can't think of the name right now. Mm-hmm. But that ship began to take on water. So all the people, all the English people got in one boat. It was around 100 people. Now, their sailing conditions were horrendous, um, which seems like every time you're— Taking a big long journey across the the ocean, you, the conditions are can be horrendous. Yeah. So they they set sail. They land on at actually Cape Cod when mm-hmm. they hit our our soil because they were 500 miles off course. So they hit Cape Cod. They'd lost almost 50 percent of their people on the ship. So around between 50 and 60 people are left. Now when they when they land, they encounter. Um, Native Americans. Mm -hmm. Now, what historians say and scientists say is during this time, there was like an ice age, a mini ice age that was going on in New England here in our land. So it was very cold. Mm -hmm. And when the English people hit our our land or the white man, as Native Americans would would say in their own um, vernacular, Mm -hmm. they had... um, they encounter these these really large Native Americans who also were this is my favorite description a little underclothed for mm-hmm. the the weather. It's like California. Yeah. <laughs> so not only do we often have a difficult time coming into um, conversation and community with people that look different than us, but also this is look different, size different, dress different, you know, right, all those different right. things. Culture shock. Culture shock. Well. One of the things that had happened with Squanto, if I back up here, so this was, this was in a different, the, the um, se- separationist landing on our land. Five or six years before, Squanto had already befriended, he's a Native American, he had befriended some Englishmen that had already been here. Right. They'd already been on our land. They have a feast together, but instead of it being a feast, they end up setting sail in the boat and enslaving Squanto. Mm. Take him to England. So for five or six years, he's over there, enslaved. He learns the language. He comes back with a, a friend, an Englishman he had befriended, lands here again, and all of his family and village have been wiped out by smallpox, wow. which was brought here by the English as they came over. Yeah. Squanto, we're moving back up to, um, he had sailed back in 1619. The separationists land on our 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 land here, and Squanto and his friend, I'm going to get the name wrong if I don't look it up. It starts with an S. It is, um, it's not Somerset, um, but. I can't pronounce. Oh, I Sorry can't. if you are a you're prob- historian oh, and you're like, no, that's not correct. Somerset. Somerset. They in a hospi- hospitable um, reach go out and say, hey, can we, they actually say, like, can we have a beer? Can we have a beer? They had they knew beer from England and had liked mm-hmm. it. Can we have a beer? And they began to have a friendship. And if not for the Native Americans befriending the very sick and very downtrodden English people, the um, they would have died yeah. completely. So the first feast wasn't that the English people came over and provided something great for these Native Americans. It's that they came here desperate. 
and hurting. And the Mayflower Compact, Compact was written as they came over as a, as a document they needed to help them govern and have a political state. Yeah. And they did say, we sail for God. Right. So although the original may have been to have some religious freedom and establish some roots, they have a friendship. The Native Americans, Squanto being one of the leaders, is helping. But the white man was outnumbered. Mm-hmm. So more and more English people, and I'm just going to move through this quickly, but began to settle. And then we have what came in to be a ruling class that pushed out the people who were here in the beginning and mistreated them, in my opinion. And so what I read, and I wanted to get to this point, for some of us that see Thanksgiving as as a day of rejoicing or thankfulness and family and food and fun, for a lot of Native Americans, they consider it a day of mourning. They consider it a moment of mourning when they're called Indians because Indian automatically separates and labels someone as something that's foreign when truly they were native in here first. So the more I read about the history, it breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. Even down to our Declaration of Independence was written with these words, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. But a few lines down from that, they call the Native Americans merciless Indian savages. Wow. So if Jesus, if God tells us in Genesis that God that we were made in His image, every single person, then those three words, merciless Indian savage, sure doesn't line up with the thought that religious freedom and godly roots and heritage was the reason for settling the land. Yeah. And the land was already settled. settled. Yeah. Um, so I think it is something important for us to see in our nation and our land that there's a group of people. I just had a beautiful conversation with a young man who works at our Verizon store here who's Native American. Mm. He has this gorgeous tattoo sleeve, and he was telling me all about what these different things meant. His family and his mom, his daughter were represented, but also there was a wolf on there and there was a sun and a star and and what these meant for his people um, here in in Georgia and what what, uh, Native American land we might be sitting on. Let's think of some of the words, Muscogee, Mm -hmm. Chattahoochee. Oconee, you know, these, yeah. these aren't English words. Right. So I think it's something that, that needs to be, to be approached reverently and with thought when it comes to even how we reach out in our community. Yeah, that's great. I mean, for sure, I know you and I talked before this saying, you know, this is, this is not a topic that we're experts. We're, we're not t- experts on no. any of the topics that we talk about. No. But that's the point of this segment. Let's talk about it saying, hey, you don't have to be an expert to, to, learn to research to study so that you can think for yourself instead of thinking based on what was taught to you Mm -hmm. uh and so i I think on on this topic for sure as i've been doing research and kind of finding bits and pieces of the story that you just told um it it does it, it creates a a fork in the road for me to say okay i can mindlessly ignore everything that I've just learned, everything that I've researched, everything that I've studied. I can continue going on, enjoying the Macy's Day Parade, watching the football yeah. game when the Cowboys lose. Or I don't, Actually, I don't know. That's <laughs> a, sorry. Uh, but I, I can continue celebrating for the sake of what is comfortable for me, or mm-hmm. I can choose to avail my mind and my heart to be compassionate towards people who – really are are being forgotten Mm -hmm. being overlooked um and i I think it's it's easy to to go in that direction and just say well i mean i i don't i don't know any native americans so i mean it's i I can't even love my neighbor in that sense because i I have no neighbor that i know of that can identify with uh this culture of people who have been overlooked but i think in a lot of ways that that's a shallow and and easy uh, cop out mm-hmm. if I use that and and, I, and I'm using me and myself I'm not directing that towards anyone I'm just saying for me I don't want to be in God's eyes and I don't want to set this example for my wife or for, or for my children that I love those that are convenient to love that I I care for those that are in my proximity but if they're not in my proximity if they're not of my demographics then it, it doesn't matter yeah. um, I don't believe that that's 
that's not the humane example that I want to set. Uh, but also as a follower of Jesus, that's not that doesn't line up with the Jesus of the scripture, because yeah. as a Jew, he could have only been concerned about Jewish issues. But he lent his time. He lent his heart, his healing, his, his grace towards the Samaritans, towards Gentiles that had no Jewish background. Right. He did that. And so I believe that we ought to do the same. Yeah, I think we we've studied here and, and spent a month talking about, you know, our required good. And we saw in the book of Amos that God dealt very severely and clearly with his people who had mistreated the people in their land. Yeah. And I remember when studying, equating that, having a lot of questions in my heart come up. Well, what about our land? And what about it? Just logically thinking, it's not like the English just showed up and this was empty. It, it yeah. wasn't empty. It, you can, you can look up stuff on YouTube and watch the, um, where the Native Americans had dense population and then watch the timeline. I, I wish I, I knew the name of it right now that I could tell you, but the timeline over the years of when they were pushed west yeah. and what's represented now and the, the oppression that exists and where they're located and there weren't, you know, can they get places easy? Do they have the resources they need? Um, instead of just chalking certain um, issues up to whatever someone wants to say, well, maybe there's a reason why. I mean, Native Americans weren't even allowed to be citizens of the United States until the 1930s. Wow. That's disturbing. That is very disturbing. <laughs> they were here from the beginning, before the 1600s, and yet it's not even, they're not even allowed to be citizens of their country. Yeah. So I think that when we watch God deal severely with his people, we have to then apply that knowing that reminding ourselves what makes me, what makes my, you know, the hair on the back of my neck stand up when I just feel like something's not right here. I don't want to be a part of oppressing something that comes up against something I idolize. Right. And I reminded myself this week, and I remind all of us as believers, we live under one rule of supremacy, and that is Christ's supremacy. That's good. If we call ourselves believers, that's our mandate. He is Lord over all. And um, as we launch out into reaching and loving our neighbor, it, it would do us good to take inventory of why we do what we do, why we, our feet step where they step, why we say what we say, and not just because of an indoctrination that we may have had our entire life. So yeah. it's important. That's great. I think to, to close us out, I want to read the definition of ignorant because I feel like what I'm about to say could come off as a shot or a jab, but uh, it's not. So the definition of ignorant is lacking knowledge or awareness in general, uneducated or unsophisticated. So it's not where I think most of us, if we're honest, we could say I'm ignorant when it comes to Native American culture. Oh, yeah. I'm ignorant when it comes to the history of, of Thanksgiving. Like, like you said, you know, I, I might have learned a little bit about it, but I don't remember it, mm -hmm. <laughs> honestly. Or what I remember is just logically you could say I'm, I'm not an expert on it. So what I was taught is not the all inclusive, you know, concept of thanksgiving or of uh the native americans and so uh i would encourage us all to to not remain ignorant don't don't willfully neglect history uh and as we go into this week celebrating uh, or this weekend celebrating with family with friends and loved ones safely because i know cdc is suggesting no one gather but um as we en enjoy this time with thanksgiving to god trying to incorporate it and engage Thanksgiving as a, a way of our life as followers of Jesus, uh, that we also just be mindful of, yes, the, the families, the individuals who are hurting, the, yeah. the families who are remembering what this time meant for their ancestors and how you know we can't, if we, we can choose to just gloss over it and continue in our consumerism, Black Friday shopping, I mean, not a jab at any of that, but just just take a moment to think, to research, to study, to have a conversation and say, hey, you know, this this day means yeah. more. Yeah. And, and we all can, I mean, I laugh, but your uh, story about talking to your, your South African friend saying, hey, you know, what are y'all doing? I never thought about that reality <laughs> that, right. oh, this is an, an American holiday. Totally American. So 
uh, let's not continue in ignorance, but let's enjoy this time uh, and Thanksgiving and a surrender to God, but in compassion for our neighbor. And we will see you guys next time on Let's Talk About It. See ya. I did the taco. <laughs> taco about it. Taco. Taco.